it's Scott Brown here, the Martinez M1 Hammer. That's what today's exciting episode is about. I've been using it for quite a few weeks now and uh, I'm gonna give you my thoughts. So I've been using the Vaughn Deluge hammer. I really like that hammer, it's a good hammer. But when I saw on Instagram and YouTube a bunch of people using this, then I got a bunch of questions from people about what I think of this hammer. Well, I thought I would try it out. It's different in that it's got a titanium handle, but a steel head. My Vaughn Deluge has a titanium head with a timber handle. And that changes the weight distribution quite a bit. One area that this hammer is really good for is demolition and that's what we've been doing here. We've been knocking out old walls and framing and this hammer's been great for that. So one of the weaknesses of the Vaughn Deluge is that. See that there? That's quite a wide open, short nail puller and that can be difficult to pull out some tough nails. Where the M1's nail puller is longer and thinner at the end, and it makes it a lot easier to pull out nails. And it also has this side nail puller here, which I didn't really think I'd use it that much to be honest, but pulling out nails like this with that extra leverage. On this renovation project, there's been a lot of these short nails sticking out of the framing and sucking and we've had to pull them out. Using that side nail puller has been more handy than I would have guessed. All right, bottom plate piece bro, yep. 940. One, uh, one area where this hammer is quite good is the grip. If you know anything about the M1, you know that these handles are pretty customizable. You can actually unscrew it and take the grip off and replace it if it gets damaged. You can unscrew the head as well and replace that. You can unscrew the handle with this one as well. See, one issue that we've had with this one is the timber handle is great for weight and you know lack of vibration, but it's quite slippery. One of the ways that you can counter that is by putting tape over it, um, some people have carved it, we've noticed. I think that's what you're gonna do, eh, bro? Give it a go. You're gonna give it a go? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, there's solutions to that. Now, one way that this handle has been kind of tricky for me is I've got this, I've got the hook on the back of this Occidental, so I'm always going like this, and then when I pull it out, the rubber and the hook thing, the base of the handle gets caught. Whereas when I use the Vaughn, no problems at all. But um, if you want a grippy handle, this is a good one. And you can replace it. It's great, it's great. So one of the main selling points, apart from the customizable head and handle, for me is the dead blow feel of this hammer. When you whack a stud in, the weight of the head of this hammer does the work for you. But the main drawback for me is, again, the weight of the head. Anytime you're doing any type of hammering that isn't straight down, or any type of hammering that isn't side on, where the weight is swinging below you, it's working against your wrist. Or if I'm trying to maneuver something in, or just gently tap something, something slightly in an awkward position, which happens a lot, that weight really pulls against you. The balance of this hammer isn't as good as the balance of the Vaughn that I'm used to. Whenever I give this hammer to someone, they're always surprised by how light it feels. The great thing about it is it's evenly weighted. You've got just enough in the head there to hammer a nail in, but not as much as this one. This one here is it's too heavy in the head and your wrist pays the price for that. That's been my main problem with this hammer. Now I know that they have the M4 and the M4 I think is a 12 ounce. And some people have said that you can, because they're customizable, you can take it off there. If you want the long handle, you can put the 12 ounce one on there and perhaps that would be weighted better. But yeah, unless you're made of money, you're probably not gonna buy two hammers just so you can have one ideal hammer. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you could just buy the M4, but that's not what this review is about. I've never used the M4. Um, but yeah, that's my main problem with the M, 
M1 is, is that the weight in the head. So the positive and the negative is the weight of the head, but keep in mind I'm a skinny guy and my wrists aren't exactly, yeah, I haven't got huge arms, so it might be saying more about me than it is about the hammer. And that's what you gotta sort of take into account with any review that I do, is that this is just my experience with it. You know, may maybe you've got this M1 and you're like, what the heck is he talking about? I love my hammer, it's perfect, great. But for me, the head's too heavy. But that's also it's positive, because that's what gives you that dead blow feel. That's what does the work for you when you're hammering in certain situations. So I think that's why I'll hold on to it. It's been a good demo hammer. Now that we're getting into the actual framing and, and putting nogs in and doing tricky little things around this house, I think I'll go back to my Vaughn. Or I'm gonna try the new Tybone 3. But I'll talk about that in a sec. Oh yeah, also the head of this one, I didn't mention, um, this is a round one. And I didn't even think about it when I ordered it. I bought this hammer, no one gave it to me for free. I didn't think about it um, when I bought it, but I wish I ordered the flat top one, which is kind of like what I'm used to here. That is the way to go, in my opinion. It lets you nail up to flat surfaces as close as you can possibly get. Whereas if you try and do it with this one, you've only got the very top of the round head. Things to consider. But I'm still going back to this. This is uh, the Vaughn that I've been talking about. This was my first hammer. It's actually part of this, but I had the exact same one. And I think the main thing to consider, if you don't know much about titanium hammers and steel hammers, is it's a weight thing, but it's also a vibration thing. The steel that runs all the way through this hammer, through the rubber here, that leads to a lot of vibration going to your elbow, to your joints, to your wrist. It's a lump of steel. Though. It's a lump of steel, exactly. It's a lump <laughs> of steel, essentially, all the way down. So that's what made me spend all the money on this titanium hammer. And the timber handle helps with vibration as well as the titanium. So I've been really enjoying that, and again, they've done it again with this one here, titanium handle, steel head for that extra power, strength. Um, I think that's what lets you get a better claw on it as well. I think if they tried to do that with a titanium head, this might split. I think that's what's happened here. I might be wrong, comment below if you, if you know more about this than, than I do. I think if they try to make this skinny like this, that will probably snap. I've got another hammer in the van. As soon as Richard gets back, I'll pull that out. I'm going to try that for the next few weeks. That is the Tybone 3. And full disclosure, I bought this one here. This is mine, cost me a million billion dollars. And this is the same, I bought this, a million billion dollars. And I did it for YouTube. <laughs> I did it so I could try it out and answer the questions that people already had for me. But the Tybone 3 was given to me by the guys who own Stiletto here in New Zealand. And they gave me a few other things. So let's go check that out. Because I felt like a complete muppet of placemakers trying to tie these things up. <laughs> Completely different system to how I do it. You got the package, bro? Yeah, yeah, I got the, I got the stash. So here is the very popular Stiletto titanium head with the timber handle. This is a 10 ounce Kind of like a finishing version, so don't know if I'll use that for framing, but it's cool to see it. Wow, well, shit, that's nice. And this here is the Tybone 3 15 ounce. Now, the difference between this and the Martinez is it has a steel head, but only on the face here. Everything else is titanium. It has a similar shaped skinny nail puller as well, so it's gonna be interesting to use that and see how it holds up. And we'll try that for the next few weeks, see how it compares. And it also has changeable heads, so this is the smooth face head. And what's on it right now is that waffle face head. So that's the waffle face there. I'm almost tempted to take that off now and put the smooth face on so I don't destroy my fingers, but I'll give it a shot. Um, that, that tie bone, that's nice, it's light, hey. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's quite a bit lighter than the M M1. And yeah, you don't get that full on heavy head. Oh yeah, it's a bit lighter. I still like the grip better on the Martinez, but. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, bro. Yeah, no, with the camera on, really. <laughs> I just wanted to test out the nail puller. This is a little bit. So, Rich also owns the M1 hammer. What do you think of it, bro? Is that your one? No, that's your one. No, same hammer, though, right? Mine's better. <laughs> <laughs> what would your review of the uh, M1 hammer be, Richard? Uh, so, when I got it, I kind of, I don't know why, I was expecting it to be lighter than it was. Yeah. But, uh, and then when I, I grabbed it out of the box and I was like, oh, I think I've just spent a whole lot of money on a hammer that's not really gonna yeah. do what I needed because I've got 
elbow issues. Yeah. But after a week of swinging it, I was quite surprised that that it does absorb the shock. Like you don't get that same. Mm. My elbow was feeling a lot better after a week of using it, and then because it's such got such a good grip on it. I don't have to squeeze as tight, especially, like, right. and, and that's where my, my elbow issues come from, tennis and golf elbow, and it's from one of the problems that's is like tensing, that's, is it? Yeah, that's squeezing and, and really overworking those muscles. So for me, yes, it's heavy. I probably, in hindsight, if I'd had a chance to pick up the M1 and the M4, but we don't have these in New Zealand yet, but if I'd had a chance to go in the store and pick up the M1 and the M4, I probably would have gone the M4. But lighter. Yeah, just for that lightness. And is it shorter as well? Yeah, it's shorter. I mean, you can always just like choke it a little bit when you're just doing some of that smaller stuff, so that's fine. Yeah. But it's not like we do a lot of hammering. I haven't. Yeah. You know, I've only had it for about a month, and geez, we've only really done demo so far. Yeah. But yeah. a little bit of hammering, so I haven't had heaps of time to put it through its paces. But. Oh, there we go. Yeah. A different take on the M1. And of course, the magnetic. See, I didn't mention that all these hammers have the magnetic that lets you start the nail like that. Waffle. Yeah, Stop. look at that waffle thing on the frame now. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm not trying to tenderize my meat here. <laughs> yeah, make, what, what, I don't focus on the price too much because all these titanium hammers are pretty expensive and, and the prices are a similar amount. So that's why I don't focus on them too much. If you don't have a titanium hammer already and you're a builder and you use a hammer every day, I would highly recommend that you get a titanium hammer. Which one you get is up to you. In case, you're, um, in case you're new to my channel, uh, the timber is pink because all timber that we use here in New Zealand is treated and is treated to varying degrees and the colour is kind of like a colour code. We had a big leaky building crisis here in New Zealand and pink is the lowest grade we can use. You can't go any lower than that. <laughs> uh, stand fell apart there. I'm not blame Rick. <laughs> just like a little bit. Sand and paper on there, mate? Yeah, then sand it. Sand it to shape. But you don't want to take out too much, obviously. So that's your thumb gripper? Eh? Like so. Um, I've 